For these people, it's their first steps back home and towards rebuilding lives shattered by war. They're among the largest group of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees who've been cleared to leave the government camps where they have lived since the end of the quarter century long war in May. We were in Mulativo and after the war we came to the refugee camp as IDPs. The president has decided to send us back home today. We are happy that we are going back home. Some 40,000 people are being released from the camps in the country's north over the next several days. Nearly 300,000 others remain in their temporary shelters. It's little surprise these people are happy to be going back. Rights groups have accused the government of keeping the refugees in squalid conditions without even basic amenities, leaving them prone to disease. But after the devastating final phase of the war, it's still not clear what they have left of their villages to return to. The UN estimates that the war between ethnic Tamil Tiger rebels and the Sri Lankan government killed between 80,000 and 100,000 people since 1983. Unofficial and unverified tallies put the number of civilian deaths in the last five months of the war at about 7,000. And those brutal final few months have become the subject of intense scrutiny by the international community. The US State Department has released a report accusing both the Tamil Tigers and the Sri Lankan military of alleged abuses. The report accuses the rebels of killing civilians and forcibly recruiting children as young as 12 to fight. It also accused the government of killing captives and combatants who are attempting to surrender. The report highlights alleged abduction and murder of Tamil civilians and of keeping the refugees under dismal humanitarian conditions in camps. What this means is what we call for is for the government of Sri Lanka in the, in the first instance to, uh, to open up the area to, um, uh, to international organizations to be able to uh, come in and um, understand better uh, the facts on the ground, you know, what, what happened there. For its part, the Sri Lankan government has refuted the allegations. In a statement, it described the accusations as unsubstantiated and devoid of evidence. But as the wrangling at government level continues, it's the ordinary people in Sri Lanka's devastated north who are still dealing with the aftermath of the war. Azhar Sukri, Al Jazeera.